Philosophants ancient have opined that destruction is an act more straightforward than creation. By the scrivenings of such thinkers, should one wish to destroy, one simply needs to select a target and apply force. Others muse that destruction is a means to an end. Without the devastation of what persists, how can something new be raised in its place? Yet more point to the inherent desire for power and domination that lies within the act. Is not all violence a desire to control, to impose one's will? These questions and more were doubtless considered by some of this record subjects, but at its core, the act of destruction was to them a holy thing. Annihilation was the apotheosis of their deity, a heavenly unmaker set to split apart the world so that what has been scoured may transcend. Know then that this is a record of the priests of the Divine Destroyer, the war savants of the Great Crusade, a record of the Ordo Reductor. The Ordo Reductor was a highly specialized martial division within the Mechanicum of Mars during the Great Crusade and Horus Heresy eras. Known by their fellow devotees of the machine cult by the flowery soubriquet of the Bringers of Blessed Ruin, in a religious sense, the Order embodied the aspect of the Deus Mechanicus as destroyer and slaughterer. While the divine machine god possessed many facets, including those that power the furnace of creation and rule the fabric of knowledge itself, the machine god is also a deific demolisher, the unmaker god, bringer of calculated oblivion. This particular order's origins lie in the depths of the Martian past, within the horrid darkness of the Age of Strife. Old Knight was as unkind to Mars as it was to most all other human domains. The red planet of old had become red again, its atmosphere stripped away, its fragile terraformation rendered unto dust and ash as the humanity of the world warred first against their machine servants and then themselves. The first tech priests were holy men binding the roving clans of Mars together in veneration of a machine god and their omnissiah, uniting scattered domains to fend off the ravages of techno-barbarian hordes, rampant thinking machines, and hungry psi carnivora. Resources on the Red Planet were scarce, and deals, alliances, and treaties were always deemed by the eminently practical Mechanicum as more favorable to simply bring a polity and its sacred knowledge into the fold with as peaceful and bloodless a means as possible. If possible. Should the red hand of the machine god be needed to mete out sacred destruction upon the recalcitrant, the priests of Mars had not merely the power, but the individuals willing to do so. Quite besides this, the roving threats of the past remained, lingering in the dark canyons of the world. Frequent indeed was it that bloody tech priests would descend into the depths to exterminate, lest the wicked things within threaten the sacred followers of the machine. By the conclusion of the Unification Wars, in 712 M30, the Emperor of Mankind sought further unity with Terra's sister planet. However, what stood before him was no ragtag collection of feuding warlords, mad scientists, and slaughter deacons, but a world as unified as his, and one that had succeeded in doing so centuries beforehand. The Mechanicum could simply not be conquered, or at least not without incomprehensible costs in manpower and materiel. In order to avoid a hopelessly bloody conflict, 
and to expedite the union of the twin worlds, the Emperor struck an accord with the Fabricator General of the Mechanicum, known by history as the Treaty of Olympus. This Byzantine document contains nigh innumerable clauses and subclauses, but in summary, it placed the Mechanicum in a position of an allied realm, an empire that lay alongside the Imperium in partnership. Although the Fabricator General held a seat by the Emperor's side, Mars was given total control of the totality of its domains within the borders of the Imperium, a symbiotic relationship bound by the Martian religious affirmation of the Emperor as Herald of the Machine God, the Omnissiah. While one has elaborated upon this treaty in full in a separate record, its discussion here is necessary, as within its strictures lies the genesis of the Ordo Reductor. Even this given title, the prefix of which is almost unused by the Mechanicum, yet common in the Imperium, gives some clues as to their nature. The Ordo Reductor was a bargain, one of many, struck between Terra and Mars. The Order was created upon that day with the explicit purpose of being a military force for the Emperor's Great Crusade, one whose role was, quite simply, annihilation. The Imperium did not lack for weapons of conquest, as we well know. The Legiones Astartes were the finest army in the galaxy, and the phenomenal pace of acquisition and colonization during the early years of the Great Crusade attests to their superlative capabilities. Yet the galaxy was, and yet is, a place dark and terrible, in the depths of which lie horrors beyond comprehension, and indeed combat by means mundane. This the Emperor foresaw in his wisdom, creating, as he did, a diverse range of military formations to overcome the perils of the alien and the unknown. The First Legion, later known as the Dark Angels, were the foremost specialists among the Astartes in this regard, granted a great many technological boons by the Emperor that he did not bequeath to others. But the Emperor was a man of options, knowing it was never wise to place all responsibility upon one force. The Ordo Reductor were a means by which the Imperium could leverage the destructive potential of the Mechanicum, not merely its technology and weaponry, but its knowledge. The Ordo Reductor were war savants, scientists of slaughter, magi of the unmaking. When the Great Crusade encountered an enemy unknowable, one that would not succumb to all the guns in its armories, it was unto the Ordo Reductor to devise a means to kill it. When a human polity reneged on the Emperor's offers of unity, holding fast behind technology ancient or unseen, it fell to the Reductor to disable their machines and lay waste to their holdfasts. It must be stated categorically that the Ordo Reductor functioned entirely dissimilarly from the Tagmata, the various militarized formations of the Mechanicum that they deployed during this period of history. These hosts were formed from Tagma, an umbrella term referring to the feudal vassal magi or organizations any given archmagos may hold under their fealty. In a time of war, the Tagma were unified and called to serve within the Tagmata, making no Mechanica military expedition alike. Thus, the Tagmata are less an organization, as we would understand it, and more of a protocol, a declaration at a time of need. This rendered the capabilities of upholding a traditional army or standing armed force essentially moot, but it was an item of political consideration at the same time. Any attempt to establish a hierarchy of command amongst the various machine god-worshipping synods, then the Archmagi, and then their Archmagi, and then their Magi Domini, would have been functionally impossible given the Mechanicum's deeply feudal system of government. Instead, the Tagmata was a collective agreement made for the good of the Forge and its interests, 
with member magi contributing soldiery, automata, and war machines in numbers they and the Synod had negotiated and deemed appropriate. The Ordo Reductor was removed from this web of fealties, oaths, treaties, and alliances by virtue of the means of their creation. They were wholly outside the spider web of Mechanicum politics by imperial demand. This was achieved, initially at least, by their relatively minuscule number. The Ordo originally consisted of but a few dozen of Mars's most warlike and bloodthirsty magi. Though their number grew as the Crusade reunited more and more Forge Worlds with the Word of Mars, the Reductor never eclipsed in any capacity the presence of the Tagmata around the galaxy. The Reductor was essentially a levy, a tithe claimed by Mars of a Forge Fane's outcast tech priests. These individuals were perennially those othered by their home forges. They were outcasts, shunned by their peers for thoughts, desires, and inclinations altogether too violent, dangerous, or borderline heretical. The Reductor not only paid no heeds to these leanings, it actively desired them. The arrangement was mutually beneficial. The local synod, or Archmagus, dispensed with a troublesome tech priest, and the Great Crusade gained a techno-savant whose overt independence, or sheer psychological instability, would come as a great aid in inflicting ruin upon the enemies of humanity. As a side effect, the Magi were also spiritually redeemed in the eyes of their brethren. Given now, as they were, holy purpose as bringers of blessed annihilation, recast from wayward souls into righteous paragons. This, curiously, saw them treated with far less suspicion by fellow Mechanicum adepts, or indeed Imperial elements, than the Magi of the Legio Cybernetica, whose battle automata were always feared as being inches away from abominable intelligence. Though ostensibly adhering to the word of the Fabricator General and the Synod of Mars, in reality, the Ordo Reductor had a phenomenal degree of independence. They formed individual commands known as Covenants, consisting of the Order's Magi, War Engines, Automata, Thralls, and Attendant Servants. These Covenants were almost exclusively based on a single, custom-built warship, typically itself one of a class developed for long-term, self-sustaining missions. Rather than the more common Arx Mechanicum, of the Basilicon Astra, typically employed by the Tagmata, the Ordo Reductor was known to favor Gallius class vessels commonly constructed by the Void Arcology shipyards of Saturn. A Reductor ship was intended to serve all purposes its Covenant may need. It would be a permanent base for the Command, their transport, their training ground, research laboratoria, weapons development ranges, and a holy fane besides. Resupply and restocking would, of course, be necessary at Mechanicum Forge Worlds, but a Covenant could reasonably be expected to thrive in the field for solar years at a time. These warships were the sovereign domain of their Covenants, beholden to the word of none within the Mechanicum, and indeed rarely even seeing their passage. The warships of the Ordo Reductor were guarded jealously, not just from those of the Imperium, but fellow devotees of the Machine God. The brazen vultures of their starships, as Armada Imperialis captains had come to dub them, were nomadic things in the Great Crusade, often arriving only if petitioned, and sometimes simply by their own license. The Ordo Reductor, as part of the treaty that had birthed it, was known to actively seek out enemies that it felt were in need of its attentions, those that would present the Covenant with substantial challenges to overcome, such that all Magi could have their skills of killing, honed, and developed. They would, of course, heed the word and call of Imperial Grandees, 
Everyone from Primarchs to Lords Militant could and would place requests to the Ordo Reductor for their aid. Typically, this aid would come in the form of intelligence gathering and destructive elucidation. Given their small number, extremely far-ranging deployments, and overall skill sets, the Ordo Reductor were sort of a mendicant sect of priest teachers, bringing the word of divine obliteration where their knowledge was required. They were explicitly not conquerors. The Imperium had its Astartes legions, and the Mechanicum its Tagmata. The Reductor's numbers were vastly eclipsed by both. It would never fall to a war covenant to take control of a planet. Far more often, the Space Marines were putting the teachers of the Reductor to use than they were serving alongside them, a covenant having informed their commanders to target this bodily appendage or that, or to deploy these specific munitions that the foe may be killed more efficiently. This did not mean that the combat priests did not take to the battlefield. They did, but almost always in the form of targeted strikes, raids upon key enemy locations, and intelligence gathering operations. They would also linger on still burning fields of war long after combat had concluded, cybernetic tallymen studying the remains of enemy and ally alike to further their investigations. There is, of course, one exception to this pervasive rule, and the one which the Ordo was most famed for. Siegecraft. A sphere of warfare dominated by logistics, numbers, physics, and the remorseless application of force, Siegecraft was elevated by the Reductor to a thing of wicked, terrible beauty. To the Magi, the relentless calculations of siege warfare were akin to worship in and of itself. The hand of the machine god made apparent in the holy divination of firing solutions, munitions manifests, and attrition rates. The Ordo knew no superior in this realm. While Astartes legions, most notably the 4th Legion Iron Warriors, made a point of pride of demolishing the fortifications of the enemy, and certainly possessed the manpower and will to endure the harrowing grind that it required, the Reductor would often eclipse them in speed and precision. Save perhaps 4th Primarch Perter Abo and 7th Primarch Rogel Dorn, the Magi of the Order would consider none above themselves in their skill in this field. Their cold pride was not without reason. Indeed, it was backed up by countless fortresses thought unconquerable, yet now that lay as dust. Innumerable zone mortalis engagements none, not even Astartes, thought survivable, yet who were brought to heel by Reductor Magi. If a citadel stood before the Imperium that not even the Astartes could breach, the Covenants would succeed where they could not. While this was in large part due to their dedicated role as scientists of warfare, the Ordo Reductor also possessed weapons the rest of the Imperium simply could not fathom. While forensic analysis of the alien or augmented human corpses Mimetic cultural assessments, even the sculpting of malefic data phages, were all capabilities possessed by the Ordo's Covenants. Each one would contain within them several specialists in macro firepower and nigh heretechnical devices, weapons so deadly as to have been banned wholesale by Imperium and Mechanicum alike. These edicts, of course, were not total. The Imperium was a military regime dedicated to wholesale conquest, and would never deny itself a weapon if one existed that could be handled responsibly, and to have its handler heed orders to do so. The Reductor possessed this responsibility, as well as the right, within certain limits, to study and even iterate upon technology from the Dark Age. In many ways, this bore fruit for the Imperium. So dedicated in their religious mission to annihilate were the Ordo Reductor, that their victories could turn the tide against a particularly dangerous foe, and collateral damage could perhaps be somewhat limited 
thanks to the bearer of a particular weapon being wholly aware of just what it could accomplish. Iterations upon STC technology and Imperial weaponry was likewise a productive endeavor. The Ordo is credited with the creation of, among others, the Land Raider Achilles, in conjunction with tech marines from the Imperial Fists, although much to the chagrin of the tank's original divisor, Arkan Land. The Reductor also developed the Eradication Cannon that came to be mounted on Ordinatus-class Mechanicum War Machines, devices that are acknowledged as having played a major role in the Rangdan Xenocides. The most iconic and widespread of the Ordo Reductor's creations, however, remained the Thalax Cyborg. The Thalaxi were heavily augmented shock troops, faster, more resilient, and more intelligent than any ground troops within the Mechanicum. It has been speculated by many that the Thalaxi were intended to be replacements for the Skitarii legions of Mars. Owing to their divested status, the Reductor could not access these regiments, either by writ or simple logistics, as their upkeep was embedded deeply into the Red Planet's network of forge worlds. The Magi of the Reductor, being few, required some form of frontline troops for their deployments, and thus labored in the construction of soldiery to eclipse the Skitarii. They were phenomenally successful. The Thalaxi were equipped with jump packs, making them faster than any ground force the Mechanicum possessed, save for purpose-built automata, not to mention being far more maneuverable than even the latter. The Thalaxi's bulk allowed them to mount heavier weaponry than commonly available to foot troops, and they were resilient enough to shrug off most small arms fire. Issues to their production and proliferation were of course inherent in these capabilities. The Thalax remained a heavily augmented human, akin to the cybernetic Skitarii, although removed from them at the same time. The only human organs retained in the augmentation process were the brain, along with the skull and spinal column, and the nervous system, itself minutely excised from the original body before implantation within the chassis, itself a variation of ceramite power armor known as the Lorica Thalax. Unsurprisingly, removing an entire nervous system and brain from a human body without killing the host is a phenomenally difficult task. The extremity of the process is agony beyond words. It is unknown precisely what parts of it the subject was aware of. There was a continual risk of grand mal psychotic breakdown, as the brain registered each nerve ending being wired one by one into its new mechanical body. Attrition rates for this process were of course a reductor secret, but one must imagine they were quite high. The Ordo would seek only prize specimens from amongst a Forge World's Guitarii legions for recruitment, their service traded for knowledge. The Laxi were, ironically, also products for trade themselves, so prized were the cyborgs by the most bellicose magi of the Mechanicum's Tagmata that the Reductor made a good business in bargaining away squads of their bespoke cyborgs in accords for resupply, allegiance, or future favors. The Legio Cybernetica was eager to study their construction and employ them in the field, and members of the Myrmidon cult, magi who often shared common cause with the Reductor, prized the soldiery for their destructive potential. Perhaps more than any other Mechanicum force during the Great Crusade, the Ordo Reductor has the most storied history of successful tactical and operational integration within the broader Imperial War Machine. The most obvious sign of this is visual. Covenants of the Reductor were both granted the honor of, and readily acceded to, the incorporation of Legiones Astartes, or Solar Auxilia, heraldry and emblems into their own particular Covenant's iconography. Should they be embedded with a force for a length of time, bonds of fidelity would often develop between the almost alien Magi and their Astartes or human compatriots, friends forged in the fires of war and common cause. 
It was not unknown for Mechanicum Tagmata, or divisions of the Legio Cybernetica, to affect similar honors, but the Reductor were, by all accounts, the most willing. Whether this made them more human or not is open to debate. The Magi of the Ordo were as disparate a collection of minds as could be imagined within the galaxy. Reasons for doing so are likely as idiosyncratic as the skills and talents that landed them their places within the Bringers of Ruin in the first place. This is, of course, the reason that the advent of the Horus Heresy split the Reductor as surely as did every other formation of the Great Crusade. Covenants sided with loyalists and traitors alike. The wicked weapons and immeasurable talents of the Reductor were now plied upon countless battlefields of the Great Heresy, from the Black Sands of Istvan to the Siege of Terra itself. What is curious is that, in the final tally, it is provable that a majority of the Ordo ultimately came to side with the Emperor over the War Master. A scant few opted for a third route in the conflict, removing themselves from the Binauric decision entirely and declaring independence. It is unknown to modern scholarship why the Ordo Reductor, specifically, would present so wholly different a percentage split as the Mechanicum of Mars or the Collegia Titanica. In the cases of both of those organizations, the divide was quite starkly in favor of the War Master, while the various tagmata of the forges simply followed their arch magi in declaring for whomsoever they had been aligned most readily to. It is perhaps this divide from the Mechanicum, the fabricator himself being something of an arch traitor, that allowed for it. The Reductor had, for its 200-year history, served imperial interests far more than those of their fellow machine-cult devotees. Mayhap they chose honor and loyalty, although this strikes one as a curiously emotional choice for so calculating a set of individuals. Several historians have chosen to put forward a less charitable, but grimly explicable theorem. The Ordo Reductor calculated that the Imperium's chances of victories were lower, and that to pit themselves against the War Master and his hordes would ultimately present quite a challenge for their arts, skills, and knowledge. Until such a time as one is able to return to the records of the Age of Darkness, Ave Imperator, Gloria in Excelsis Terra. This video and this channel were made possible thanks to the very kind donations and support from my Patreon subscribers. If you'd like to help support the channel, head on over to patreon.com slash Oculus Imperia. If you'd like to receive more updates about the channel and any future videos, you can contact me or follow me on Twitter at Oculus Imperia. Otherwise, please like, subscribe, comment, let me know your feedback, and as ever, thank you very much for watching.